Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs and tonight I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little fall mule attachment. We are going to do a sew and a no sew version. Okay guys, are you ready to make this cute little guy? He is um, just something simple and cute for fall. But um, you just never know. Somebody might want, actually want a little mule or donkey, whatever you want to call him. And there's lots of different things you can do for him, guys. Don't think you have to decorate him the way I did. You don't have to put the teeth on. These teeth are just glued on. I didn't sew them in there. You don't have to put the raffia, um, or the raffia up here for that matter. In fact, the one that we're going to make, I'm not going to put the raffia in. Um, I'm going to do a really quick sew and no sew version just to kind of show you the differences in um, doing all that stuff. But uh, pretty much, you guys, I'm pretty sure most of you who've done this before could probably do this. You guys know I like to cut my hats and rough them up and tear them and just make them, make them look, you know, <laughs> worn. <laughs> so um, just whatever you want to do to make yours look however you like. And you obviously don't need to put the hat and the straw on if you don't want a horse or mule or donkey that has a fall look, you could make him a unicorn. Do whatever you want to do. So let me put him aside. So first we're going to do the sewn version. And I kind of sped things up a little bit. Sorry, my camera, I must have bumped it. There we go. Come on camera. I'm trying to keep it straight, but you know, not the easiest thing on a boom. Holy moly. Okay. So everything is crooked. That's the problem. It's not just the camera. Everything is crooked. <laughs> so, so what I've done is I have just, I've made one foot already, and then we'll make this one together. I have made one ear. We'll make this one together. So I just wanted to speed things along a little bit. I know it can get a little bit monotonous when I'm doing lots of the same things over and over, but I have everything cut out. I have the little teeth here have the little pink nostril. You can do whatever color nostrils you want. And then I have these little eyes. Now I have not put resin on these um, because I was only doing a couple of these. I just have not had the time this week to pull out the resin. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, just sew, this is the sewn version, remember guys. Um, we're going to sew, and it looks kind of awkward and it's all weird, but we're gonna sew the top of the head to the nose, the little snout here. I guess it's a snout, I don't know. So, and this, it just takes some practice with this. Grab your pins. A lot of times when you need to sew something that is, well, we'll do it over here, you can see it. This piece goes like this, and this piece goes like this. It, it's not really easy. I'm sure there are easier ways or different ways if you are a practiced seamstress. But you know what? These are wreath attachments. I don't want to get into too much of making the pattern just too complicated, like putting slits in it and doing all, no. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this brown piece in the back and I'm just kind of curling it around and matching it up with the cream color. And then I put a pin in it. So we're going to just kind of do it all the way around. And you'll need a few pins because you want, you know, every little half an inch or so, you're going to want to put a pin so it doesn't slip out. And yeah, look, it looks all weird. It's all, it doesn't line up. It's got this big lump in it. That's just something we're going to have to take into account when we're sewing it to make sure we don't sew the lump back there. And you just go really slow and you just pull it out tight and you make sure every, um, all the way down the line that it is not catching on anything else. So, I'm walking, I'm just kind of bringing the brown around to match up with the cream. Like I said, I know for stuffed animal makers, they do all kinds of weird cuts. They put slits, they do this, they do that. It's It can be very complicated. And I try to make things as least complicated as possible. So now I'm gonna start sewing right here. So what I'm, I'm going to pull my brown back here, pull it so that that lump and that bump is actually flat right here. Now it's all crazy on this side, but it's flat right here where I'm gonna start sewing. When 
you just go from pin to pin. And as I go, I'm grabbing the brown from underneath, I'm pulling it flat, remove a pin, grab the bottom, pull it flat, remove the pin, grab. And so I'm just kind of working the brown flat every single little half inch or wherever there's a pin. So I just pull it and pull it, pull it flat some more. And so this is this end piece is where it kind of can get gathered up. So you really, and see how this one's already wanting to turn this way. So you really have to just go slowly, pin by pin. And then it comes out looking like this. It's, you know, it doesn't look kind of concave, but you just, you pop it in this way. Um, when you're, when you're filling with polyfill for, for the horse anyway, I mean, it just looks cute when the nose is all, um, it's not flat, you know, I like the look of it. So, okay. So we have our front and back of that. So I'm gonna leave that there. We'll work on the ear. So because now if this was a dog or a cat ear, I could sew all three of these together and it wouldn't make too huge of a deal. Um, but because this is horse or donkey or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to put, I don't want my back seam to be on the back of the ear. It just doesn't look right. See how this one there, you don't see the seam or the, I'm sorry, the stitching, not a seam. You don't see the stitching from the front because I, I'm going to sew this onto here first, and then I'm going to put them together and sew them. <laughs> Guys, you can use lots of different colors for this. I mean, I used brown just because it was what I had, but uh, you know, get creative with it. You can do white, black, gray, just whatever. Have some fun with it. Okay, so now I have the inner ear sewn on. I'm gonna put the outer ear back on. And we're gonna sew this together and then we're gonna flip it around right side out. Make sure I didn't miss anything. I did not. Let's see if I can get my fingers in this thing. I may have to use the hemostats. Oh, this is small. Let's see. We're going to make it work. Oh, Lord, we're not. Never mind. <laughs> I thought we were going to make it work. It said no. Remember guys, the hemostats, if you don't have a set, highly recommend, look how easy that was. I didn't even have to like strain my fingers and, and you know, hurt, hurt my fingers on that. So highly recommend them. Okay, so now we have both of our ears sewn. We have both pieces of our face sewn. So now I'm gonna work on a hoof. This is the same way I do most of my hoofs. Um, okay, guys, I don't know. You might not be able to see it on this. Hopefully not, but this is glittered. See how that has glitter and that's plain on the other side? It's literally a scrap piece that I'm using. Don't think you have to use glitter because this one, obviously no glitter on it. You can use glitter. It's up to you. But <laughs> I was just looking for a scrap piece of black and that little piece of black was there and I grabbed it and we're just going to use it. So... So pretend this doesn't have glitter on it, and we're just going to pin these together. All right, so here's our leg. We're gonna open up to the inside, and here's our hoof. This is, this is the piece we want attached to the leg. And then when you flip it around and you put this piece down, then you put this piece, Got the white thread. I really should have changed the black thread, but oh well, we're gonna make it work. Okay, 
And the reason I know that I have this proper is because whatever's on the inside is what's going to show. So this glitter is going to be tucked inside. Nobody will see it. Okay, so now we have that lined up. We're going to sew just the sides, but not the bottom. Okay, and now we're going to flip it around and do the other side. I have not sewn the bottom here. Okay, so now we're not going to flip it around yet. Get rid of some of these strings. And we're going to add the bottom of the hoof and the bottom of the hoof just it you know it makes it look like you know a hoof really it instead of just being flat and you know skinny it gives it just a little okay so the hoof piece is like a horseshoe basically it's flat on one end pointed on the other so it's going you're going to keep the flat end in the back and the pointed end or the rounded end up front so what i do with this as I open this up, I take my flat back and I, right in the center of it, I put it right where that seam is. And I want it to, I want to hold it flat because really, um, you kind of want to keep that, the back end of it flat. So I'm going to put a pin where, at each of the edges where it is flat. Like that. So the rest of it is going to come around like the horseshoe, but this back part will um, not be quite as rounded. So now I, ouch, darn it. Now I just grab pins and work my way around, pulling, putting it all together. I kind of do a little one on one side, one on the other, um, just to make sure I haven't pulled it too tight or I have, you know, a bunch like bunching up and left over. So. Just go all the way around. And not, sometimes these little, the bottom feet things, they don't fit 100% perfectly. But remember with felt, you have a little stretch. So if it's a little tight, you can stretch it just a smidge. If you, if it kind of bunches up, you can um, I'd like undo one side and just pull it a little tighter. So there, I have pins basically all the way around. And remember when you're sewing on the inside, because we have to sew this on the inside, you want your pins on the outside. Um, it's just so much easier that way. You can get them out of your way a lot easier. But we're going to put this in here like this. And we're going to sew around the inside from the inside. You can't really do it from the outside like that. And it, it's just, it warps everything. It doesn't make a nice even round circle. So I recommend pinning on the outside sewing on the inside rim. Let's see if I can, whoops. Lord, you got, oh shoot, hold on. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you guys. This Archon mount is just, is, is absolutely falling again. Okay, let me see if I can do this again. All right, we'll just zoom in. Now this isn't really easy to see because my sewing machine is faced the other way. But I'm going to start back here on the, the back seam on the flat part. I'm going to pull out the pin. I'm going to put it under there. Pull out the next. Pull out the next. Okay, so that was the flat part. So now I'm going to work it around. Pulling out pins as I go. And twisting this as I go to make sure it's following me. With these smaller items like this, it's not too hard. If you guys remember how we made the, the little gnome bodies, it's the same concept. So now you have 
this flattened bottom, it is sewn all the way around. And now you're ready to flip it around. That just takes practice, guys. Like I said, if you remember making the gnomes, it's exactly the same way we do the gnome bodies. You know, I mean, it's, it's really the same way we do a lot of things, so. Okay, but you can see when you, um, you put it out, it comes to kind of a little point there, similar to the way a horse hoof would. You can kind of see it on this one as well. You know, it's not perfect. It's not totally flat, but it works. And then what we would do with this one is just stuff them, add a piece of wire to them, which honestly, I don't even know if you really need the wire. It's up to you if that's the way you want to attach him. You could just put a little, you could just sew a little loop at the top. If you're not planning to um, bend them or use them like to hold a sign or, or anything like that. So it's just totally, totally, totally up to you. It always amazes me how much polyfill these things can take. This is one of the reasons I like to use the felts because you can really stuff the heck out of them. They, uh, they can take it and they don't get all lumpy and bumpy. Okay, so there's our, there's our, our leg. So I'm going to take, I have pliers in here. Okay, so I just have a piece of wire. The length of the leg, I'm not putting it down into the hoof. It's just the length of the leg plus a little bit extra. This is pretty, pretty good wire. It's, it's not real thin. It's definitely not floral wire. This is the aluminum wire. I'm going to push it directly through the center of the polyfill. Uh-oh. Hold on. I have a little bit of the seam here. I, it's a thread. I'm not sure if it's a, just a loose thread or if it's something that's going to unravel. So I'm going to throw just a dot of hot glue on there. I know you can see it right there, but I'm going to try to use the fur to cover that up because I don't feel like taking it all apart right now. <laughs> Again, so I'm putting it in there and then what I'm doing, I'm feeling with my, sorry, I'm feeling with my thumb and right there, I want to push the wire through right above that seam there. And then I take some pliers and I bend it. I bend it right into that fabric so it's not gonna come out of there. And then this top piece, sorry, I fold it in just, just a bit, just like a half an inch, kind of give a little cuff to it on the inside. It just looks neater. I mean, you don't really have to do this. It's just what I do with it. I'm going to put a line of hot glue on that cuff inside. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to use my clamps. Remember these clamps I got them at Hobby Lobby. The, my store, I got the very last pack last week. Um, it was in the kitchen section with the, where they have like the barbecue, um, cute little barbecue thing. I mean, just all the kitchen utensils and um, summertime stuff that they put out. That's where that was. So I'm going to let that go. Let it cool. And now we're going to just throw some hot glue. Put a little fur on. Yeah, we're not quite going to get up as high as that glue, but it's okay. I'm not, I'm not too stressed over it. I would much rather have a little dab of hot glue right there than have the whole seam start coming undone. So. Um, I could even take a brown Sharpie or a brown something and just go right over it. So no big deal. Okay. So then this is good. Then I just, I just curl it over and then push it to the back. And there we go. Those are the little legs. I mean, there's not much more to it. You do not have to use this fur either. If you don't feel like you, if you don't want the fur, don't. I mean, make it your project. You can use, you can just don't put anything there if you don't want to. Okay, so let's see. Now, 
we need to do something with the face. So we want to put it right sides together, of course. Seam, seams on the outside, so right sides together. And I'm always really particular, and Olivia can tell you, I like where, I, I need to like bend over here. I like where the, um, I like these to match. I don't want it to be, you know, all not matching. I want, I want this four way of four different fabrics all lining up together in the same spot. When you have a visible seam like this, now on an underside or if it's just something that's not visible, no. But this is visible, it's on the side of the face. If you choose not to put the um, halter on, then it will be very visible and very obvious when they are, you know, not lining up. So I put those pins in first. And then I will just, oops, line up the other parts. And just put a pin just to kind of hold it in place. Now here's where, if you were not going to put the hat on, you could put these ears inside of here. Let's see. Okay, we're going to do it anyway, even with the hat on. So we're going to, I'm going to try it both ways. So because these are two, th there isn't a front and a back. It makes it much easier. So it just, uh, Oops, well, I have to repin that one. Hold on. Here we go. I'm going to place them in inner ear side. Oh, my camera, I keep, I keep losing it. Sorry, guys. Like, come over here. Come over here. I'm right here. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to place it with inner ear down. But because this is front or back, it does not matter. You can put the ears in whichever direction. So I'm just going to slide. I'm sliding these ears in. Now these eyes, these ears are going to flop forward, but because I'm putting it, putting them in the hat, it won't matter. They will look like puppy dog ears. So if you were going to do this as an actual horse without the hat, I don't know if you want to put the ears in this way. You can pinch them and turn them sideways if you want to. Like if you were to pinch it like this, the long way, like I said, guys, there, there are patterns that if you want to learn to do this like the professional way, then absolutely have at it. But I go quick and easy because I'll have all day. Let me see, how does that one come out? Yeah, either way, either way will work because you're gonna, tw I'm gonna twist the ears around to fit up under the hat. So really, it doesn't matter. But we'll try this because you know, I've not done this in a long time. So I'm pulling it out like this, so that the seam is down the middle. We'll try it, who knows? I may hate it, I may like it, doesn't matter because I'm putting a hat over it. <laughs> okay, so then you just wanna push your ears away from all the edges. Make sure up here they are relatively even. Okay, I'm just moving them in there. Let's just see what happens with it, I don't know. It may, it may look really stupid or it may look cute, I don't know. We'll find out. But like I said, I'm to throw a hat over it. Nobody's going to care. And I'm going to leave this top part up here open to stuff. Let's see what we, let's see what we get here. Making sure I, I don't want I don't want to sew through the ear anywhere, so I felt like my ear was coming over here into the seam, so okay. just checking to make sure all there aren't any little bitty spots that I might have missed, and they all look pretty good. This is also a good time to make sure when you um Sew your little notch here that is pretty much even. 
Um, you don't want it to be uneven because that, that will also throw everything off to look like. All right, let's see what happened with these ears. Oops. Okay. They may look really cute and they look really stupid. Like I said, <laughs> I'm open for either. I don't really care. Okay, so when you... Okay, so I'm, honestly, that's kind of donkey looking, right? With the ears like that, all flayed out. <laughs> it's not too bad. So we're going to flatten out the ears. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It, it does kind of look like a donkey with those big, crazy, wild ears up here. There we go. Not too bad. It's different. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of like it. Let's get this stuff. See, a lot of these things, guys, I don't have patterns. I don't have anything to go by. I just try it. If it doesn't work, I pull it apart or I throw it away and I start start it over. There is nothing wrong with trying something. I mean, to me, felt is so inexpensive. I don't mind. It's just like a piece of paper. If I draw something and it's really bad, I'm just going to throw the piece of paper away. You know, I'm not going to sit and try to erase, you know, a bunch of stuff. So don't just try things, try different things especially with the no-so. There's so much of the no-so that even I haven't tried. So, you know, try different things. You could teach me something probably. I mean, I'm just learning all this no-so stuff as well. So, all right. And see how, see how the, um, and if we just sewed this straight across, there would be a divot here. It would actually cut in and it wouldn't look nice. But because we took the time to sew this round, it really, either side, because, you know, it really allows for the nose to pop out and not be um, sunken in. And I really, I, that's why I take the time to sew the stuff around on the insides. Um, it just looks better. Okay. All right, funky mule. I like you. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this top part shut. I just had this open. This The hat's going to be over this, so I'm just going to do a really ugly. I'm just going to pinch it together and sew it. Now, if it was going to be seen, well, I, would, I wouldn't have left this open if it was going to be seen. So normally I always take, whenever I have a spot that I need to fill the polyfill, I hide that. If you guys have seen some of my things, there are times where I will cut a hole in the back back here so that I can keep the shape of the actual project without having a big ugly, you know, seam like that where I filled it. I would rather cut a hole back here and then put a patch on it, essentially, than, um, than give anybody anything that has a big ugly seam like that. That's just ugly. Okay, so this is going to be my front because I already like the ears on this side. Now, had we done the ears the other way, it still would have looked just as cute. But since we did it this way, I'm going to go with it. All right. So, let's see. Now, here is the dilemma. I bought the two hats. Remember, you guys, I told you. I did not realize. I kept thinking in my mind, if this is way too big, then the 8-inch must be perfect, right? Well, the 8-inch <laughs> is actually kind of small. Really. Like way too small so i'm going to use the big 10 inch again because i don't know I, I just can't put that little big hat now i have a i have a slicker brush and i'm going to go over the trash can and i'm going to rough up these edges a little bit a lot of roughing up I could probably I should probably get my scissors and do some snips but I can do that afterwards so what I'm gonna do I'm going to cut let's do it from this side I'm going to cut my hole for the ear over here and I cut I actually cut a hunk of it out it's easier to pull the ear through if you cut like an actual hole here instead of just a slit 
And we'll go to the other side, do the same thing. Yes, it makes a complete total mess. That's why I did it over the trash can earlier, but I wanted to see how I did like a full on hole right there. Um, just easier to pull the air through. So, okay, I cannot work with all that though. I have to get this up. Kind of why I didn't bring the raffia in. After we did the scarecrow last time, I was like, oh my God, raffia was everywhere. I still have stuff over here that I have to move. I have to move all of my light stands so I can get under it and get the raffia out from underneath it. So no more raffia. Okay, oops, before I put the hat on, hold on, I'm jumping ahead. I have this little, um, what do you call this? The fetlock, forelock, the, the main, the front of the main that I like to put on them, just peeking out from under this little hat since we're not doing um, the raffia because I don't feel like making that huge of a mess. I'm using my little glue gun that is, Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm not measuring, I'm not getting all perfect with it. I'm just making sure it falls down kind of right in the middle of the ears here. That's it. <laughs> it's going to come out from under the hat, so really doesn't matter. It's probably a little bit too far forward. It's going to be in his eyes, but then again, some horses have hair in their eyes, so we really need a lint brush, a lint roller. Here, we'll use this. <laughs> All this hair is coming off. Okay. Well, good enough for now. Now we'll put this on here. Now, if you wanted to, you could have put wire in these ears. But what I found is when you use two layers of felt plus the little inside layer, they kind of tend to do what you want them to do. I mean, they're, it's very thick. So, um, here, wait, let me show you this one. Oh. You can, if you wanted to, you can put the hat on with the little ear. Now my ears are all wonky. And you can leave the ear down under the hat, you know, kind of like that. It, it is a cute look as well. Um, uh, it's really hard to see because I don't have enough hands to hold it, but you kind of can see. But when I did that, um, I just, I kind of liked it up through the hat better. And it, they can still flop down, um, but they're just, they're, or they can just stay up here and be completely obnoxious. Because, yeah, and this hat, it is really still too big. Like, we need a hat, I need a nine inch hat, because the eight is too small, the 10 is too big. I really would have liked a nine inch hat for this pattern. I guess I could have made the pattern smaller or bigger, but <laughs> it's very. Okay, so there is him with his little hat. Whew, goodness gracious. Now, I would make sure my ears were exactly where I wanted them, and then I would, um, especially in the back, look at the big gap in the back. That's a big gap back there. I don't know. I would just throw some hot glue way up inside there and like shove this head in there. I mean, the hat's not going anywhere, but if you just wanted a little bit of hot glue just to kind of, or maybe just around the ears, maybe just put a little bit like right up under here and around the ears. And that way the hot glue, um, you know, won't, the ears won't pull out and the hat won't fall off. Something like that. And we're going to put on these silly little eyes. I didn't really find any eyes that I really liked. I mean, if you guys have the time to look, I mean, try to find eyes that kind of work with your little guy here. And these are blue. I, I ran out of brown. I mean, it just, huh. this seems like every time I need something, it's going to take me, you know, three days to get it. Okay. So we're just making them even. Blue eyes don't look bad. I mean, it's not terrible. All right, push this hat down again. Okay, there we go. We have, I did pink. You could um, do brown or whatever. You don't have, there's so much hair on everything now. Holy cow. Or fur, I should say. Goodness. And I put a little nostrils because they have big nostrils. And just eyeball it wherever you think it should go. 
You like that? Well, those are very crooked. We will have to move those around. Alrighty, so this does, I probably do need to trim that, but as you can see, even without the raffia, he's still cute. He'd also be cute with like a little baseball cap on. I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want with him. I just, the hat is really big. But you can see, if you wanted to now, I would take this, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna put a line of glue on the bottom of the little teeth and stick it right on that seam. You don't have to sew the teeth in, you can sew the teeth in. This is double felt. So it's two pieces of felt glued together. Um, and then just, that's all you have to do. Those are way too long. But you know what, you get that, okay, those are too long, sorry. <laughs> They're distracting me. I, I can't just leave them. So sometimes in the pattern, you have to adjust it to how you like. Don't be afraid to alter the patterns however you want them. All right, little, little teeth down there. So he's just silly. I know. All right, so that is the sewn version. So now you guys, if you want to do the sewn version, how I did the hoofs, how I did you know the curve of the, the nose and stuff, those are just different things that I wanted to teach you with this guy because they're different. They're not just straight lines. So let me throw him over here. Let's see what else I have. Oh, you know what we forgot? Hold on. Before I do that, before I go, I found this ribbon. Great. Oh, it's all falling now. Um, I used a strip of black felt the first time I did this halter, but I have this ribbon, and I just got it at Hobby Lobby. And it's got the white stitching on it. It kind of reminds me of a halter or a dog collar or something. You know, it's got that, the white stitching kind of gives it that look. So I am going to go ahead and add this little halter. And you do not need a lot of glue for this. Just uh, do it in a line. Go with, go around the curve, you know, because you don't want it, you don't want to go straight across. You want to go with the curve. Same thing in the back. A little line of hot glue. And just enough to hold it here. Alrighty, there we go. And then there's his little halter. You can use pipe cleaners to make little rings on the side or however you want, but that's just a little extra added touch to it. Okay, we'll throw him in the bucket and pull out. This is the no so guy, the pile. And again, I tried to pre-do pre a couple of these pieces because, um, you know, I just don't want to, I don't want to take all your night away or your time. Okay, so. I did not stuff that. Oh, okay. I guess I need to finish stuffing it. This is basically what the leg is going to look like. It's going to be just a triangle down here, the leg. Um, I've attached a little pipe cleaner in there. These need a little bit of hot glue on them. Well, I'm not going to do that because I only stuffed it to here. I don't know why I stopped. And then the same, I put a white. This is gray. I did this one in the grays. So just be different. And um, the white fur on here with the grays. So like I just wanted to show you that you could use all the different colors. Now the pattern, of course, is going to say black and all that, but you know, guys, you you have the you can make that deciding factor. Okay, so because this is no so, let me throw my sewing machine away. Let's get this out of here so I can get my glue gun back on the right side of the table. Okay, well, yeah, yeah you can. I hate trying to work with my glue gun on the left. It just doesn't work. It has to be over here somewhere. All right. So the pattern is a little bit different. And you, I, on the pattern, I tried to label everything so and no so, so and no so. But some of the pieces, like the ears, it's the same pieces. You, I didn't do a different pattern for the ears. I glued the two pieces of felt together, the dark pieces. And then I glued the lighter piece on top and if they don't line up perfectly and that bothers you, just, just give it a little trim all the way around, you know? But so I've already glued those. I was trying to do some things in advance so I could um, not bore you to tears. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is finish our... Now, we are not going to stuff these ears. These ears are basically done. I mean, there's, there's not much else you can do for them. 
And we're going to stuff our little hoof here. We glued the hoof part on first. And we're not going to glue the leg on and try to stuff the whole stinking thing. That's just too much. So I'm going to use my little dowel and try to push the polyfill into the little crevices on the side. And then we're just going to add, we don't need a lot, but I just like to have a little bit of padding here on the hoof. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way to the top up here because I need to cover this top part now. Now, the easiest way to do this is just put a little bit of glue to hold that down right there so that when you glue this one on, it, uh, it doesn't keep popping up and the polyfill popping out on you. So we're going to do that. And I'm just going to, I'm going to clamp part of it just to hold it. So when I turn it over, you can see this has a pretty good overhang. Actually, I think it's already dry or cooled. So I'm only going to go up part way. And this is, this is what I did with that one. Then I forgot to, forgot to stuff the rest of it. So I'm going to go up about halfway, somewhere in there, fold this over. Now you can always go back. And so either cut off all these little, these little extra flaps or just add more glue to hold them down. So um, because it's so much, I'm just going to add a line of glue on each side. I'll just kind of hold it down a little better. But that cool just a sec because we can't really stuff it just yet. And I will show you what I did on, this is the face. This is the... Same size as the other one, it's just we're doing it on the foam board. I took the gray, the dark gray, which is the top of the head, and I glued it all the way around. You guys have seen me do this a hundred times. You know, you just glue section by section by section, and then you can go back if you feel like it and cut off any of these little bumps. Now, you can cut slits in it all the way around, but again, don't cut all the way to the foam board or you're going to have little white V's all the way around your thing. It doesn't look right. So I choose not to. I just like to bunch it all up and I'll show you when I do this gray piece. And then I go back if I need to, which look at this barely has any. And I just cut off these little, basically I'm making the slits afterwards. No big deal. And you can add more glue again to just hold it down. Um, and it just, it looks fine without doing all the little slits in it. So, um, I have, I have already stuffed this side. We have to do it piece by piece because we can't stuff the whole thing at one time. So let's see. Now this one, I'm not going to glue underneath this because I want it to puff up like that. So that the horse's face looks circular. Okay. Does that make sense? This one I didn't because I'm gonna I'm gonna glue this fur onto this. I want a nice flat area for the fur to go to. Okay. The polyfill is not agreeing with me. So you want to get all the way to the end because we're not putting um, glue in there. So we can polyfill that all the way to even if it's poking out a little bit, it's okay. And then we're going to take our little muzzle piece. And I did not cut this well. I mean, I don't even know what scissors I used to do this because it's pretty bad. You kind of want this, just this top part that goes over the other piece to be relatively round. So practice your, practice your round skills here. The stuff on the sides of the back doesn't matter because we're going to fold it under. But what I'm going to glue right here, I don't want it to look like a, a five-year-old did it, okay? I mean, sometimes it looks like that anyway. Now, you, I could glue all of this and then stuff the polyfill here, but I'm going to have a hellacious mess to clean up with polyfill on this felt. So I would prefer to put the glue on here, place this on there, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put this over it again. Remember, everything, if it's ugly, we hide it with trim. So even though this is felt on top of felt, it really doesn't look that bad. But I'm, I knew in my mind I'm going to put this over it. So it really doesn't matter if those line up too much um, because of the halter. Okay. So that, that, well, that's cool. I'm going to let that cool before I put any kind of pressure on that. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to fold it back. 
because we only glued it halfway, remember? And, and then I'm going to start stuffing the rest of this leg. And a bigger stick would be much easier. But, and I'm just going down as far as it will let me because we have that glued area right here. If you can kind of see right in there is the glued area. So it won't let me go further than that. Okay, so there, and then fold it up. Again, throw some hot glue, both sides, and close it up. And we're gonna let this one, I forgot the pipe cleaner, but you don't have to do this first. You can, um, I just, when I do a pipe cleaner like this, I'm just wanting something to you know, attach it with, so it doesn't need to be too fancy. You could, well, and I always pull it through and then um, hook it up there, right? You can cut it, if it's too long, you can cut it. But then afterwards, you would just glue all of this down and these things are not going anywhere. Unless it rips the foam board, which it could, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that all cool. I don't know if I can get any more polyfill in here, but I feel bad because this leg did not get stuffed. And now that I've glued my pipe cleaner, I don't know if I'm going to get any more polyfill down in there. Oh well. That did not work out. I don't know. I was just in a hurry. Here, wait. The great thing about the stuff is honestly, you can just, there we go. I, whatever that glue was that was stuck, I just undid it. You can just tear it apart and redo it. You're covering it up with felt. So nobody, you're, nobody's gonna see if you tear all this fabric off of this leg and re-glue it. I mean, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we have polyfill all the way up the leg and I feel better about it. Okay, so part, this, um, this side of the pipe cleaner came undone. So I'm just gonna stick it back in there. It doesn't have to go in the same hole. Wherever it will go. And then fold it up, fold the other one up, and we're gonna throw lots of glue on those. And if you can get it under the felt, it works even better because it will, um, the felt will hold it down too. So I just glue stringed that to death, but there we go. Okay, so now we're just going to fill the rest of the top of this one. And this is a great way, guys. Think about, you know, if you want to make just a set of no-sew witch boots. Exact same process. Different kinds of fabrics, obviously. Different kind of boot at the bottom. But... You know, you could do just, like, if you just want witch boots, there's a lot of people who do, like, the Unique in the Creek witch hats and stuff, and they just want witch boots. They don't need the whole set. And you can easily make them a no-sew, like this, with a really cute witch boot down here. You're just going to have to get some clip art. You're going to have to draw the boot out. I mean, it doesn't take that much, really, especially if you have a, if you're really good with your printer and you print it out, then you can use, and you get it the size you want, then you just cut it out and there's your pattern. So um, don't be afraid to go online and find some, find some different clip art that you can use for basic things like that. There's probably a million witch boot pat or not patterns, but just drawings. And you just take whichever one you want, whichever one looks good or works for what you want it to do. You just have to be able to size it, of course, with your printer to the size that you need. And we're going to put the fur on there. There we go. So, I mean, very big. And obviously, if you were selling these, I would just take a piece of black felt and cover this back. Because, you know, you want it to be finished. This one, these are not perfect. But hanging down from, uh, and, and they're a little extra long. So you can get them up under all the deco mesh and stuff. You can really take them as long or short as you want them. So those are the legs. They turn out really good. And it, they're super easy to make. And like I said, anything you want to make with those. Um, right this time of year, I'm telling you, I get messages for witch boots or witch legs all the time. 
Unfortunately, I can't find any of those really cool striped fabrics. I'm not willing to give up any of my spider legs for witch boots. So everybody wants striped, especially the uh, lime green and black striped witch boots. And I just like, I can't, I can't give up my spider legs. I'm sorry. It's all I have. <laughs> so now this is cooled off. So we're going to go back here and we're going to start walking this around. Just doing a little bit at a time. Whenever you have two opposite sides like this, it's always good to do a little bit on each side. Okay, so I'm gonna put a small slit in this one because it's pulling just a bit. I don't want it to pull. I keep working it down. This, this uh, piece of felt was way too big. I don't know. I could have made it smaller. For sure. Okay. So now I'm going to stuff his nose to make it nice and even with the top of the head. I'm going to push it like all the way up under. Even where the dark gray color is. Just keep pushing, pushing it up under there. And just, because I left this opening really big, I can use my hand instead of a stick. It just makes it so much easier. I can feel every little corner that I'm getting it into. It's just, it just so, so much easier than the stick. All right, now we're gonna shove in the last bit here. And guys, I had already put my pipe cleaner on the back. Remember, don't forget, put your pipe cleaners on. This one, I would normally probably have put two. I'm not sure why I only did one, but it's okay. One, it's so lightweight. One will hold it. You don't really need to go crazy. Okay, and we're closing up this whole bottom. We're just grabbing it, folding it over. I'm not using too much glue that is leaking out and burning my fingers. And um, the key to it is just to hold it. You don't need a ton of glue to hold it. You just need to take the time, either clamp it or hold it with your fingers. Now I'll go back. Cut off some of these larger, okay, this one here I don't like. Sometimes I get a crease in it. I'm just gonna add a little more glue. I'm gonna pull this tighter. I'm gonna get that, that little quarter of an inch that of stretch that felt will give you. Don't be afraid to use that. If you need to like pull a crease out or something that just doesn't look right. I normally don't pull the felt, but sometimes if you have to, you have to. Okay, so look at it. Super cute. It's all nice and ready to go. So let's see. First, we're going to put this on. Just cut a piece of it. We're going to go straight across and like that. Hold it down. it over. Just glue it back there. It'll hold. It's not, doesn't take much. Okay, so now we have a cute little halter on him, which is optional, obviously. You don't have to. Um, oh no. <gasps> oh lord, I did have a brown eye. I did. I had one. I put the blue up. Well, now I don't know where the other one is. Uh oh. Did I lose? Hold on, let me get to my little bin here. I only see one eye. Oh man. Well, I put the blue eyes on the other one. I didn't realize I still had a set of brown eyes, but I don't even have a set. I just have one. Look on the ground real quick. I may have, oh, there it is. I found it. It's still in the trash can. Okay, so I did have brown eyes. I could have used brown eyes on the other one, but it's okay. We're going to make it work. Those are the things you just got to roll with. Um, I'm going to put his little um, um, main thing on here. Now, I don't really want this sticking down as far, so I'm going to really, I'm pushing it way back there like that because 
this this piece I cut is just super super long. Come on, glue stick. There we go. All right. At least this one isn't shedding as bad as that other fur did. This white fur is nice. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do an eye. Just kind of put the eyes, you know, make sure you put the eyes where you want them before you glue them down, obviously. I just tend to throw it on there, make sure they're even. So the brown eyes don't look bad. The blue eyes would have looked better on the gray, but you know what? I'm going with it. <laughs> it's just, I'm good with it right now. <laughs> it's a little nostrils down here. which I know sometimes they put them way up here, but he's got such a huge nose. I just didn't feel like putting the nostrils way up there. I don't like it. Alrighty. And everything, I mean, when we do these no sew things, everything just gets glued to the back. I mean, there's really not a whole heck of a lot more to it than that. I'm going to have to clamp this ear on though, because I can tell already that it is... Now, if you want this to be a horse, obviously do much smaller ears. By clamping that one on, because this is a donkey slash mule slash whatever silly guy we wanted to do tonight, just make sure they're even. Make sure I have another clamp here. I'm gonna clamp it because I'm gonna hold it the whole time. So look at him; he's looking cute, isn't he? Like honestly, just just like this, he's cute. Now with this one. Um, if you want to add the hat, I'm going to cut it in half, guys. I'm going to do it over the trash can, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to make a mess. Sort of cut it in half. That was a really miserable cut there. I am not going to add this hat to him because I think he's cute without it. But um, actually, he would be the one that would be cute with a little baseball hat. I don't like him. He's not, he doesn't look like scarecrowy fall to me at all. He just looks adorable just the way he is. I'm nixing the hat. That's trash. I like him. His ears are a little floppy. I mean, um, you could, before you glue down this lighter color, you could put a, just some wire under it and that would make the ears poseable. Or you could even put it between the two layers of the dark felt. Um, but, oh my God, he's adorable. He's cute just like that. I like that without adding anything else to it. I'm like, well, let's see. Let's see what the teeth do. Okay, teeth are still cute. Okay. I don't know why I have this thing for the teeth, but I'm going to put them on there anyway. Everything just gets glued right underneath. Super easy. And when you put the, ba the black backing back here, you can put the black backing back here too. And that would hold these ears in really well. So they, like I said, they're a little floppy, but that's adorable. I hope Christy's watching this because this is what I imagined for her, for her little RJ. I know it's not the right colors, but it's so stinking cute. She can make the cutest wreath with this. So anyway, guys, that is it for our little mule donkey guy. Um, I think the no sew is super cute. I do like the other one with the hat and the raffia and all the fall with it. He is cute, but I'm really, um, I, this is the first one I made, no so, and I really like him. I think he's adorable. So um, I hope you like him too, and I hope you guys will make some. And like I said, if you want, you could do smaller ears and a horn. You can make him a unicorn, do them in whites and pinks and purples and all the fun unicorn colors. You could do it, lose the teeth, of course, and do whatever you want with him. He's super, super cute. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, I like this. All right, guys, that's it tonight. You have a good one. Bye-bye.